Good morning, everybody. It's uh, a day after Christmas. Two days after Christmas. Gee, time goes by so fast. I can't keep up with the days. It seemed like Christmas was is still coming. But it has come and gone. No, I'm not, I might not be as loud as some folk, but I'm not whispering. Okay. <clears throat> well, this is another day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thank the Lord for another day. It's good to be able to wake up and smell the roses. Well, it's good to be back again another Sunday morning the lord has been good to us thank you again for your faithfulness and thank all of you for uh your christmas gifts and acknowledges and texts and however phone calls or whatever else that you have done toward us i appreciate that so much and thank you for your faithfulness continual faithfulness uh with the church and, and so on and so on Okay, you are a blessing. You are the greatest people to me, that I can consider on earth. Is the people at United Fellowship Church of God of Prophecy. You're great people. And I appreciate you from the bottom of my heart, from the bottom to the top of my heart. Okay, all right. Okay, how do this is the end of, we're coming, coming to the end of the year. Uh, Lord will nothing happen if we see the end of next week. We'll, we'll enter into another year. Uh, speaking of that, we're hopefully on next Friday night. Yeah. Uh, around 11 o'clock. We, Thursday. So it was Thursday night. Well, Friday is New Year's. Well, Thursday night around 11, I guess we'll start a our New Year's Eve uh, thoughts and process as to whatever we're going to do. I guess we'll play it by ear or maybe I'll have something kind of lined up as we get to next Thursday. Okay? I'll write it in. Well, my message this morning is don't look back. Don't look back. All right, let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you again for allowing us to be here again this morning. Thank you for all those out in, what you call it, not television land, or Facebook land, or yeah. whatever we are. Uh, we just thank God for the opportunities that he has given us to proceed with his word, no matter what conditions we find ourselves in, we can still render his word as he has given it to us to help us to continue in the way that he would have us to go. And I appreciate that. Again, the Lord has been so good to us. And I appreciate all of his goodness, his mercy, his kindness, his love, and all that he has done for us. And he keeps doing for us, even in times like this, he is still a great and good God, and I appreciate all that he has done for us. And we thank you, Lord, for guiding us. ask you to bless us in the next few moments as we share a few words that hopefully that will be encouraging to those that may be listening at it in this present moment. If you do this for us, Lord, bless us and keep us. If you do this for us, we give your name the glory, the praise, and the honor for all of it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <clears throat> Don't look back. There's, there's a scripture in Genesis 19. Uh, we'll read a few verses of that. Genesis, the 19th chapter. And I think I'm going to begin at the 22nd verse. This is the chapter where the, the lot uh, is concerning the Gomorrah, Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, 
was the time when Lot was was asked by God to get out of Sodom and Gomorrah because he was getting ready to destroy it. Well, let me just read a few verses. Of it. It's twenty second, starting at the beginning of the twenty second verse. He said, "Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou come thither." Therefore, the name of the city was called Zor. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zor. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. But here's where, here's where my thought come from. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. So the, the, what my thought about that is don't look back. It is not good to keep looking back at the past. Yesterday is gone, the song says, and tomorrow may never be yours. I believe in living in the moment. The Bible tells us in Genesis 19, Genesis, Lot's wife didn't want a future with God because she missed her past sins. In Luke 17, 32 to 33, Jesus said, remember Lot's wife. Why? As a warning to us today, we can easily look back to the sins of past if Christ isn't in your future. When I think about my past, it never, it's never a pretty picture. So I just leave that alone. My parents died too young. Just the other day, my grandson asked me, how long am I going to live? I told him I didn't know. But I hope it's a long time. What I'm trying to do is make sure that I live a, live a life that is productive and giving honor to God, my Father. And I know we cannot work our way to heaven, but I also know that we cannot just go to heaven any kind of way. There is but one way, and that is through Jesus Christ and through living a life of righteousness one that is pleasing to God, our Father. In Philippians 3 and 7 and 8, the Apostle Paul said, I once thought all these things were so very important, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Haven't you lived in, in, this, in a situation like you think what you're doing was so important until you realize and you, you found Christ in your life and you found out all the crazy things that you've done or even good things that you thought that you were doing became worthless when you found Christ and Christ became the living portion of your life. Paul goes on, he said, yes, everything else is worthless when compared to the priceless gain of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. I have discarded everything counting all of it as garbage so that I may have Christ. In Psalm 78 and 41, he says, How again and again Israel tested God's patience and frustrated the Holy One of Israel. Speaking of Israel, there's a history of Israel that you have been studying on Wednesday nights. The biblical history of Israel covers 1,800 years and represents a marvelous panorama of God's gracious working through, promise, through his promise, his miracles, his blessings, and judgment. Israel begins as the only promise to Abraham, Genesis 12 and 2. Even after God had brought them out of the bondage of Egypt, every once in a while, they would want to look back at where they had come from and start remembering the past and 
and missing the past and reminding Moses what they had left in Egypt. You see, sometimes if we're not careful, we can get caught up so deep in the past and forget that there's a future. Even Israel kept forgetting God had promised them another land where they didn't even have to fight for, but it would be a land of milk and honey, so to speak. I mean, I guess the way I look at that, it meant that they didn't have nothing to worry about. God had, was going to take care of them. They, had, they didn't even have to really fight their own battles. God fight, fought their battles for them. So he, they didn't have nothing to worry about. Just live and obey and be obedient to the things that God had taught them through Moses as they walked, went into this promised land. The land that they were going to give them, the practical value of studying Israel history is threefold. One, it is set forth examples to be followed and some to be avoided. See, there's always some examples for us to follow, and there are some examples that we need not to follow. So we got to be careful as we walk this walk with the Lord that we stay, what they say, in our, in our lane, that we stay in our lane and don't get out of our lane, but stay in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the promises and the, the thoughts and the, the, and the directions that God has given us. In 1 Corinthians 10 and 6, it says, these events happen as a warning to us so that we would not crave evil things as they did or worship idols as some of them did. It, in the number two, it shows God's control of all historical events in that he was able to deal with Israel as he chose. The 7, 8, and 4 says, We will not hide these truths from our children, but we will teach the next generation about the glorious deeds of the Lord. We will tell of his power and might, miracles that he did. It serves as a model for all ages of God's kindness and mercy toward his people. Don't you, don't you realize, do you, do you realize what a merciful and gracious God that we serve? Oh, if you could just, just reminisce all of the goodness and the gracious and the mercy of the God that we serve. That should make, 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 uh, what them things run up and down your soul? You, you, you ever feel so good you feel like little goose pimples? Well, that's the way it, it feels when you feel the, the goodness of God and his mercy and his graciousness. Psalm 103 and 4 says, he ransoms me from death and surrounds me with love and tender mercies. The Apostle Paul in Philippians made this statement. He said, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. He said, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of Jesus Christ in God. It is said that Philippi, at the time of this particular message or scripture, was penned. It was considered the gateway to Europe. The city was named after Philip of Macedonia who was the father of Alexander the Great. Philippi was by possible points of view a miniature Rome. By evangelizing Philippi, this issue that the gospel would be spread throughout all the Roman Empire. The Philippian church could be considered an ideal church because it was one which was grateful and generous. I remember Paul, most of the time when Paul was coming to a church, 
he would tell them that they were going to give him an offering say, make sure that you get the offering before I get there. But this, this and it, because he was so generous. The letter, I am told, was a letter of spiritual love, letter of sorts, filled with warmth and gratitude. The Philippian church has sent Paul a gift. So this letter was a means of Paul saying, thank you for your kindness. You see, in order to reach our goal, the first thing I want to be is to bear in mind, you must keep your eyes fixed on your goal. Stay focused. See, here's the thing. Somewhere the Bible says, an idle mind is the devil's workshop. So if you're not careful and you don't keep good thoughts most of the time, because uh, if you let you, you let you have you ever have experienced this? If you let you just sit and just let your mind wander, all kinds of things come to your mind. So it's better to stay. You got to try to stay focused as much as possible on the things of the Lord, so that you won't stumble and fall, uh, do something that you'd be uh, sorry that you did. Paul had a vision and a goal ahead of him. And, in, and, and he, he is letting us know that he is keeping his eyes on that goal. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to the time if I can live the life that I'm trying to live and I can hear the Lord say one day, well done, thy good and faithful Sir, enter into the joy of love. My goal is to make it heaven. I, I, I had a lot of goals down here that I wanted to do personally. I wanted to be my own businessman. I wanted to do a whole lot of things in this life until, until I found Jesus or maybe Jesus found me and I found Jesus. <laughs> and I gave my life to him. Then all my goals changed to one particular goal. And that goal was to make heaven my home. And not I didn't want to go by myself, but I want to help as many people as I can to make this trip with me, to hear the Lord say, well done, enter into the job. I told you one time, he's going to, I can see him standing there, and I can see the, the, the goats on one side and the sheep on one side. And... The goats being separated from him and the sheeps making it into him, with him, into heaven. That's a goal. We can set a whole lot of goals down here. We may obtain some of them and we may never obtain. I, I've had a lot of my goals that I set in this life down here. I, I reached them. I, I accomplished a lot of things in my life that I set, those little goals that I set, and it came to pass. But the greatest goal that anyone can set is to keep your eyes on Jesus and, and keep doing this. Keep look, don't look back. Keep don't keep looking back. You will never get where you're going if you keep looking back. You must press on. Paul says, "I press towards the mark." You got to keep. You got to have. A, you got to be focused. You got to stay focused on the mark at which you're trying to attain. Don't lose your focus. If you lose your focus, you probably lose everything. Whenever there is a challenge facing you, you must learn how to press on, no matter how hard the challenge may be. Keep pressing on. If you keep pressing on, Paul uses the analogy of a race to show that we are constantly striving toward a goal. When a runner starts out on a course, he doesn't carry any unnecessary clothing or baggage because of the excess weight will slow him down. 
He doesn't run constantly looking behind him because in doing so, he cannot see what danger may lay in front of him. The goal is to cross the finish line. Yet well, none of us have made it yet. We're still striving to make it. Keep on pressing toward the mark. Don't give up. There's no time to give up now, but keep on, keep on. So as a mother, uh, what was her name? She used to say, keep on keeping on. The goal is, the goal is to cross the finish line. Ecclesiastes 9 and 11 lets us know that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, but to the one who holds out. God wants us to keep on striving, keep on trying, and keep moving on, trying to reach our goal. Never give up. Never lose focus. Keep on keeping on. The race will end one day. And one of these days we're going to see him as he is. See him standing in the heaven. Oh, I can visualize that from time to time. I just visualize him standing there. And when he tells Gabriel, let him know that it is finished. And I can see him standing there in the heaven with his arms wide open and the heavens open up and we look up and see him as he is. That's going to be one glorious time for them who have lived a righteous life and ready and made themselves ready to go back and be with the Lord. That what a day, what a, as Psalm said, what a time, what a time, what a time, what a time that will be. I'm looking forward to that. But you know what? We haven't made it yet. We gotta keep striving. We gotta stay focused. We gotta keep our minds in the right place and keep on keeping on until we hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Don't you wanna hear that one day? You gotta stay focused. Don't lose your focus. I don't care what it is, whatever you're doing, even in this life, if you're striving to do something, you got to stay focused. You lose your focus. You lose your hope. You lose your energy. You lose everything. you got to stay focused. I remember the first time I went in business. I, I, I thought one time I should have given up. I used to sit in my little shop uh, day after day. Didn't have no, no work. Didn't know I was going to get into work. I wanted to give up, wanted to close up and leave. But I, I held on. I stayed there day after day. After a while, I got a little business. Got it. I, that gave me a little hope. And then after a while, got a little more business. Gave me a little more hope. So you got to keep striving on. You can't give up. You're going to always have some disappointments and whatever you strive to do. But you can't give up. You gotta hold on, you gotta stay hang in there, you gotta stay in there, you gotta stay focused. If you stay in there and you stay focused, after a while, hey, what is that song? Somebody is gonna turn around. I can't remember that little song, but it's gonna turn around. It'll turn around for you. But hang in there, stay focused. It'll turn around for you. You'll see and you'll thank God for it. All right? Amen, amen. Stay focused. Don't lose your focus. Don't give up. Keep on striving. Keep on running. Stay in the race. Stay in the race till you cross the line. You ain't crossed the line yet. None of us have crossed the line yet. So hang in there. Keep going, all right? All right. God bless you. Hope I said something this morning. Be a blessing to you. Keep on keeping on keeping on. You'll make it one of these days. Bow your heads with me. Father in heaven, Lord, I thank you so much for your goodness, for your mercy, and for your love, and for your concern for us. You didn't have to be concerned about us, none of us, but you love us. 
And we thank you for loving us. Even when we didn't love ourselves, you still love us. Bless this church. Bless every member of this church that I have been placed at the leader. Bless every member. Bless the ones that are with us, the ones that have gone. Bless them wherever they may be this morning, that they might find peace and happiness and joy in the Lord wherever they find themselves. Let, let this continued year, we're almost at the end of another year. I don't know what the, tomorrow is going to bring. I, just, I live in the moment, and I want us to live in the moment. Let's just live in the moment, because you don't know. Tomorrow is not promised. We may never see tomorrow. But you can always live in the moment and live the best that you know how. And Lord, help us to live the best that you would have us to live. Continue to let your spirit lead us and guide us in the direction that you would have us to go. And Lord, when we come to that end of that line and we cross the finish line, all we want to do is hear you say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Lord, these blessings and all blessings I ask in your name and for your name's sake, I ask them all in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. I appreciate you. Continue on in the Lord. Continue on in the race. Don't give up. Keep on keeping on. All right. God bless you. Elijah. Bye.